good morning, everybody. Um, I'm really sorry, pleased to be here, but can I start off by making a correction? The Arden American History and Heritage Association isn't even a year old, and our bank account is only a few months old. <laughs> we did come out of another association, uh, but we are actually almost completely brand new. I am, by training, a geologist. I don't know, originally knew absolutely nothing about archaeology, and I feel a bit of a fraud speaking to you today. <laughs> and that's why you've got a geological map up there to start you off. <laughs> Those of you who know anything about geology will know that Arden Mercury is extremely well known geologically because it is, of course, one of the tertiary volcanic centres. And if you went to Arden Mercury 60 million years ago, it was a huge volcano, as was Rum to the north and part of Mull to the south. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I went to Arden American, because I was a school teacher. I got fed up with being a school teacher after 30 years, and I needed to go somewhere beautiful and chill out. And I chose here. And to make a change, I became a shopkeeper, and I ran the little <laughs> shop there for 10 years. But during that 10 years, I spent probably more time just walking across this lovely, lovely landscape, because Arden American is one of the forgotten jewels of, of Scotland. Once you're outside the Croftlands, there are no fences, you can walk for miles and miles and miles. And although, like with Tyree, the weather isn't always absolutely superb, in fact it can be bloody cold at times, and also extremely windy, what we found as we walked, and as I walked, I was looking for the geology, uh, that in certain places in Ardenmerkin, somebody had been doing what my professor of geology used to, be, used to call gardening. And it's this, it's shifting the rocks around that should be left where they belong. And anything, according to Professor Coe, was less than 65 million years old, and particularly things that had been shifted around by humans, was definitely gardening. The trouble is that if you wander Arden America, you kept coming across this gardening. And while I was looking at the rocks, it used to irritate me, there were very nice rocks in these things here that had been moved by somebody, but in amongst these, this lot, there was actually something very strange going on. You know, like, what was this? Because it was in that little valley there, miles from anywhere. What was it? And I did what I always do on Arden American, because I'm an incomer, I've only been there 20 years, but I'm an incomer, I'm going to die an incomer. But <laughs> what is it? So I asked the locals, oh John, it's a cow pen, or a bull pen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that thing's about three metres across. And either the bulls in the days and that was built were very, very small, or you folded them in half before you put them to bed at night. <laughs> there are five of them in the valley, strung up across the valley. And I have to confess, I really had no idea what they were. And I'm still not sure today what they are. But what really converted me, in the sort of St. Paul moment, converted me from the geologist into the beginnings of a rather poor archaeologist was this thing because it, when I tried to research it, it wasn't on any of the maps, there was nothing about it on the RCA, HMS website, and I was just blown away by it. It's 12 metres across, it's in a very windswept valley, it looks down the valley to Mingary Castle and out into the Sound of Mull, and I just had no idea what it was. I still don't know what it is, I think people like Phil have looked at it, but um, I think it's either, I'm told, a Bronze Age, um, uh, house, or it's some sort of burial cairn. The thing was that there were a number of us beginning to get together to realize we had a common interest in, in the archaeology of the place. This is another circle here, this is definitely a hut circle, and this was found by a friend of mine who is at Sordal on the north coast of Ardenberg, and that actually, if you get down close and look at it, is a remarkably well-preserved uh, hut circle. And then another of our, fr our, our group, and by that time we were beginning to call ourselves the Arden American Community Archaeology Group, found this. Uh, this again isn't on any of the maps, any more than the hut circle is on any of the maps. And this is definitely, I think, a, a kist. Yes? Uh, there's another one, I think, here at the front. And I think that's some sort of, uh, of, of cairn circle there. Uh, and we realised that we were actually coming across things which were really, really, you know, would be of interest to archaeologists as a whole. So we began to list them. Uh, as we field walked, and we came across more and more and more <coughs> different things. 
Uh, like, for example, we came across lime kilns, uh, cans and standing stones, barrel things, uh, drying kilns, uh, an absolutely superb kelp pit. It's not up there yet, absolutely brilliant kelp pit. I'm told by somebody who has worked for um, the Historic Environment Scotland, it was the best one she'd ever seen. And we began to map these things. Now, excuse my terminology, but the, the, I call these little villages um, that we have scattered around on Arden Merck, and I call them trackens because I don't think they're townships. To me, a township is something that happened after the crofting period. So I call them a clacken. And Ardenwerken is basically divided up into a whole load of little clackens. I live in this one here, almost say Bay. And we began to map where these different features were. Like one of the fa my favourite features, which we've only just had confirmed really, are these little illicit whiskey stills. There's another one we found quite recently. It's actually a total of five now. And the more we walked, the more we came across these, these absolutely fascinating things, including, uh, let's say, some of the stone circles here, the hut circles, um, and also these very interesting isolated farms. Now, most of the people in the old days seem to have lived in these little clackens. We kept coming across isolated farms in the middle of nowhere, which didn't seem to fit into the pattern at all. Really, we were saved from wandering around and, and, and in our ignorance by a, a group that comes up to Arden American every year uh, called the Arden American Transitions Project. And this is a really properly run, as opposed to our you know, ramshackle uh, affair. This is a properly run archaeological dig, and they take a whole lot of students up there, and people like Phil at the back there try and train these students to be proper archaeologists. And we made use of this. They were, they were very good, the Arden American Transitions Project, about allowing us to come along and dig with them and learn a bit of archaeology. And really, in my personal view, if, Ar if Arden Merkin was is famous, and it is famous in, our, in geological circles, it's not particularly famous in archaeological circles until Phil and his mob found that. And suddenly, I hope you will recognise what it is. It's a boat burial. It's the finest boat burial found on uh, the Scottish mainland. Sitting in that thing there, which they found in 2011, Phil, was a lovely boat along with a Viking chieftain, his axe, his sword, his spear, his shield, his drinking cup, his whetstone, the whole bang shoot was sitting in there. And I think that at that point really Arden Merkin became for a few minutes famous. The only thing that niggles me a bit is that the, 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 the artifacts and that have been down to London, we're in the big London um, the, the British Museum display of Viking artifact. We on Arden Merkin haven't seen any of them yet. Every time we could grab somebody like Phil, I think some of you may recognise Cara on the left there, who's another great friend of ours, we drag them out into the middle of Arden American and show them something and say, what's this? And Phil once made a dead dreadful mistake of admitting that he thought that something was a Pictish house. I think he's been regretting that ever since. Look, he's shaking his head. It's not a Pictish house, is it, Phil? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Tell us it is. But the great thing was, that through Phil and Cara, we joined a thing called a Doctor Monument. And that suddenly enabled a group of complete and utter amateurs to start getting some proper training. And that really was, I have to say, I'll say it publicly, a Doctor Monument is absolutely wonderful. Because Phil and Cara would come up quite frequently to our remote part of the world and <coughs> teach us things like RTI. This is, underneath that, is um, a couple of grave slabs, which are the Iona School. They're about 15th century and they're absolutely beautiful and they're rotting out in this graveyard but at least we now have a, a digital record of them and they taught us how to do proper graveyard surveys and they taught us oh just a load of stuff it's really wonderful to have them come out and help us we of course also developed our skills this is engineer Jim engineer Jim does everything from flying quadcopters and I have to say archaeology from a quadcopter is absolutely wonderful to making his own alley dade, because we can't just pop round the bar with an alley dade in a nearby shop, so he's built a beautiful one there out of oak, so we actually taught ourselves plain table surveys. And unfortunately though, if you're a member of a doctor monument, as well as getting the people come out to see you, they insist you actually adopt a monument. So we adopted <laughs> this one. It's arrowed in that uh, picture. This is typical Arden American, can I say, ladies and gentlemen. This is a place called Kamas Nagal. 
is absolutely beautiful place and it is stuffed full of history and archaeology. That's what Kamasna, the, the little graveyard in Kamasnagar looked like when we took it over. The first time Phil went into there, and he's a big lad, he completely disappeared in it. We set about clearing it. And once you start clearing it, you start finding all sorts of wonderful things, you know, in addition to what people thought were actually there. So we have over there a, a standing stone, and we've got obviously some sort of graveyard there. That's the standing stone. Um, it is probably, we're told, Bronze Age, but you can see quite clearly it's been um, carved with Christian symbols. Uh, St. Columba is supposed to have come to our America, and we've got St. Columba as well, and we've got St. Columba's this and St. Columba's that, so perhaps he actually um, carved that. It's very interesting because it's got, as well as the big crosses, the wee cross in the middle, and there's another cross up there, and four rounded things called pellets, which I think celebrate the local sheep. And there's also a dog there, which is definitely a collie. Right? So you know, even in those days, they had collies and uh, sheep. And this is the graveyard. It's actually an 18th century graveyard. We even know who had those two tombstones made, a chap called Alexander Campbell. But if you look in the RCA HMS website, they just describe those two uh, headstones. In fact, when we finished, we'd actually uh, found three more lying there. There's no one just around the corner there. And there's also something in the bottom here. So we've got probably at least four other gravestones in there that we've done. And we haven't even started excavating in there, mostly because we're not allowed to, because it's, it's a scheduled monument. <coughs> As part of our adoption, um, part of the problem with this lovely graveyard is that the sheep and cattle from the nearby field have been wandering across it and knocking things off the walls. So we've actually started now to... Uh, put a fence around it, and that, of course, there uh, is uh, Engineer Jim, who's in charge of these sort of things. But not satisfied with just one monument, we took on a second scheduled monument, being the sort of ambitious and foolhardy group that we are. This is St. Cohen's Church, actually in Kilhoen, which is the main town on Western Ardnamurkin, and of course, Kilhoen is named for St. Cohen. Um, it's uh, 12th century originally, though probably the first church was on there in about the 7th century, which was part of Thomas and Cohen himself. So we adopted this, this really beautiful church. This is uh, Jim's quadcopter, incidentally. So you get the sort of views you can get from a quadcopter. Um, the trouble with adopting this one, we actually adopted it because there's a load of stuff in there that needs preservation. What we didn't <coughs> realise was, in fact, that we immediately had a serious problem with the actual church itself. Because, like so many of these old monuments, they belong by default no longer to the church, but to the local authority, which happens to be Highland Council. Now, Highland Council, like all authority, is very, very poor. And what one of their officers, who trundled out to kill Helen, discovered was that just in this magnificent lintel here, this, this front facade is 18th century, in this lintel here there are two cracks. And these days, cracks in lintels equals health and safety. So what do you do? You close it. Not only do you put that thing, but later on they put a big steel fence around the thing. So you couldn't even get in anymore. So the Merkin community archaeology, as it was still called in those days, far off days, um, decided we had to do something about it. And fortunately, fortunately, we happened to have a rather run-down castle a few miles away from this place called Mingary Castle which the local laird, who is extremely rich, was busy in the process of turning it into a very desirable tourist spot, which he's now completed. It is absolutely superb. He's done a fantastic job. But fortunately, in order to redo a castle like this, you need an architect, a builder, and a structural engineer. So when they were up at the castle one day, I said, Oi, would you mind coming over and look at our St. Cohen's? We've got a slight problem there. So we have in the picture here, this is uh, Francis Shaw, the architect. This is uh, JP, the um, builder. And this chap here is the structural engineer. And I invite you to look where the structural engineer was <laughs> standing. And that's the point, was that Brian wasn't in the slightest bit worried about the lintel. But what he was really worried about were the lovely arches. He said, the next big storm you have, they're going to come down. Well, maybe, but we need to do something about it. So at that point, ladies and gentlemen, this very amateur group 
had to do something about this because it's a beautiful facade and for those arches to come down would be an absolute disaster. So with Phil and Cara's help and with a lot of support from people like Francis, the architect, we applied for uh, planning uh, permissions from, historic, uh, from the um, Historic Environment Scotland to do something about the place. They were actually very understanding about it and they were so keen we should get on with it. They actually gave us a £4,000 grant to get JP and his men to mend it. And we actually have now stabilised these three arches. We put a steel uh, girder underneath the, um, the lintel there, so that is now safe. You can see we've added stones on top of here. This is the proper port and mortar here. This is um, lime mortar that's been used in there. We even were allowed at very short notice by the um, uh, by Historic Scotland to in improve the, the um, seal, which were also in a bad state. For our troubles, we then applied, we just gluttons for punishment, to historic, to the Heritage Lottery Fund for a, so we could have a party. But unfortunately, our, our application was successful and they gave us £9,300. So we're going to have a hell of a party. <laughs> but, but we have a future. Because I think that with this, by this time, we were the Art and American History and Heritage Association. This is where I have to disagree with Elaine about Tyree. The big problem for anybody moving north and south along this west coast route is Arden Merkin because you've got to get round the end of Arden Merkin this ladies and gentlemen is a picture of Arden Merkin on a calm day <laughs> to go back to the clackens <coughs> those are the clackens scattered round Arden Merkin again at delay and this comes back to a point you made and I haven't realised you're going to say these sort of things but those are the ones I'm not quite sure about Ockle but all those ones of course are Norse names and therefore our Change, the change really in, in, in what we have in our future it was the History and Heritage Association is that we're actually going to move much more away from the, you know, the big things which are in the RCA HMS books and on the website into the ordinary people's places because stuck up the back of Camas and Gala, this is lovely bay again, is this area here and we've just started to map it and this gives you an idea of the sort of buildings that there are up on the, 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 the very poor soil at the back of Camus Nagal. And they include this one, number one here, which is that one there, which is just all once again clearing something. And we've actually got the skills now to do um, a sort of a plan of it. And it's interesting because these three stones here have all fallen down into it. The door is probably there. And it's a very odd shape because it's not the standard sort of black house shape. But we are desperate, and this is where my appeal comes up, because we are ignorant. I mean, I'm, I'm basically, if you ask me to do a talk about geology in here, I'd be far, far happier. I, I'm really ignorant. But we, so every time anybody comes out into the peninsula who knows anything at all, um, we grab them and take them to the various bits that we uh, have found recently. This is a lovely American gentleman by the name of a uh, film by uh, Jess McCulloch, who has uh, used a, a bit of a bit knowledge, but isn't he, Phil, again, on uh, Viking things. Right. So quite coincidentally, we dragged him up and said to uh, Jess, you know, please have a look at this, because it might be Viking. Any chance of it being Viking? We love it to be Viking. But there's <laughs> a Viking burial found on the, on the cove on the other side of Arden. Come on, can we have a nice little Viking house on the south side? And Jess took one look at that and said, nah. <laughs> but, but, when Jess saw this, he was much more interested. And the lady who's here, um, Heather, who's got a feeling for uh, whether things might be right <laughs> or not, um, I, Je Jess did, did think that this, because he, he'd been looking at the ones in Greenland, uh, which are beautifully preserved, and he said what this has got is it's got th these two things here on either side of the door, and it's a single course of stone around, around, around the edge there. But you can see that, like everything, he's still rubbing his beard and saying, maybe. What we want out there now is somebody who can tell us for definite what these things are. Like, for example, last week, this fascinating thing here, which has got, again, a raw bowl in the middle of it. It's the shape of a boat. And it's very like the previous one. But the trouble is that it's uh, way, way, way above sea level. Thank you. Thank you very much.